A few years later, the Fiat six-cylinder 1500 sedan entered the market, Fiat decided to present a higher class model with a six-cylinder and two-point-liter engine. The official presentation took place at the Paris Model Show in October 1938. Produced at the Lingotto plant in Turin, the 2800 was conceived as a seven-seater sedan. The company intention was to offer a product living up to the national competitors, in particular Alfa Romeo, and capable to satisfy the needs of the government orders. Unfortunately, the difficult historical moment chosen for this operation between the Ethiopian War and World War II, in addition to an engine with little power compared to the weight of almost two tons, slowed down the spread of this model. The company then sold several chassis to the coach builders and transformed 210 of them into military vehicles by shortening their wheelbase. The production ceased in 1943 with chassis number 625. From a technical point of view, it was the last Fiat car with mixed wood and sheet metal technology built before World War II. The 2800, almost 6 meters long, had a great visual impact. The design was entrusted, as well as for the 6 cylinder 1500, to the designer Mario Revelli di Beaumont, who was working as an external consultant for Fiat at the time. Revelli traced very conventional lines, outlining a larger aerodynamic grille flanked by the new Carello headlights, and concentrated himself on the interior, which was very comfortable and suitable for five people, three sitting on the fine wool sofa and two on the folding seats, which could be accessed through the large doors with wardrobe opening. The rear area was separated from the front by a glass partition and the communication with the driver took place via an intercom. The dashboard, however, was unusually spartan and the driver sat on leather seat. As was customary for the Italian representative cars, the 2800 sedan was frequently photographed in the magazine and not just for the many advertising campaigns. In fact, she was the protagonist during official ceremonies, royal weddings, and often portrayed alongside personality of the Royal House of Savoy, the fascist regime, and the armed forces. The car with chassis number 7 was purchased in September 1938 and assigned to the Grand Officer Alberto Bellardi Ricci, a Turin diplomat working for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1925. He had served at the embassies of Bruxelles, Madrid and Warsaw before he assumed the direction of the Section 5 in the Directorate of Political Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1936. In June 1938, he received from the head of the government, Mussolini, the appointment of Royal First Class Plenipotentiary Minister and a new position at the Italian legation in Montevideo. At the Italian diplomatic headquarters in Uruguay, it had become necessary to remove the Royal Plenipotentiary Minister, Serafino Mazzolini, who declared himself skeptical about the introduction of the new royal decree on the defense of the Italian race. Moreover, he had not been able to calm the local anti-fascist feelings that had grown in the country following the decision of the Uruguayan government not to formally recognize the King of Italy and Albania as Emperor of Ethiopia in 1936 aligning itself with the American and the English government decision. So Mazzolini was therefore removed and transferred to the Italian legation in Cairo. The Italian diplomatic headquarters in Montevideo did not have the status of an embassy. In South America, at the time, only the embassies of Buenos Aires and Rio de Janeiro were active, as they were places following a strong Italian immigrant presence. The legation chargé d'affaires wrote to Bellard de Ricci to get a car since it had never been assigned to his predecessor, but also linings, furnishings and service personnel. 
The headquarters in Montevideo was located in a French-style villa which also needed modernization works despite having a beautiful garden and a tennis court where the consular offices were six kilometers away at the harbour where his Fiat 2800 arrived by ship a few months later. Having landed in Montevideo with his family, Bellardi Ricci immediately had good relations with the Italian immigrants, but unfortunately, difficult ones with the Uruguayan government. Then the scenario became more complicated with the declaration of war in June 1940, when England became Italy's enemy and also with the entry into the conflict with the United States of America in December 1941. Consequently, Uruguay also broke off the diplomatic relation with Italy and so Bellard Ricci and all delegation staff were evacuated and the management of the consular office was delegated to the Spanish Embassy, a neutral nation but politically close to Italy. Upon returning to Italy, Bellard Ricci resumed his job at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and following the declaration of armistice in September 1943 between Italy and the Anglo-American forces, he declared himself faithful to the monarchy, and in 1944 he was assigned to the Italian embassy in Stockholm with the same role he had in Montevideo. Here he spent about three years before receiving the appointment of ambassador to the headquarters of Santiago de Chile. But during the 1947 Christmas lunch party, Bellardi Ricci was stabbed by an Italian guest who turned out to be a psychiatric patient, apparently for no reason. He died before being admitted to the Karolinska Universität Hospital. The Fiat 2800 that was assigned to him in 1938 remained in use at the Montevideo legation until it was replaced by a more modern vehicle after the war. After about 40 years, the car was sold to a California dealer. It was here that about 25 years ago, a collector from Turin found it. Today, after a long and careful restoration, the Fiat 2800, which has its number 7, has returned to its former glory. L'ambasciatore con la piuma sul cappello, è arrivato l'ambasciatore a cavallo d'un cammello, ha portato una letterina dove è scritto sta così, se mi piace Nini ti darò tutto il tuo cuore, è arrivato l'ambasciatore. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share this video.